is slow browsing grinding your gears. You click a link and wait. You try to stream a video and it buffers endlessly. It's a common frustration, but the good news is that you don't have to live with it. In the next 10 minutes, we're going to walk through a series of simple, safe, and effective steps to diagnose and fix the most common causes of a sluggish internet connection. We won't be using confusing jargon or suggesting expensive upgrades. Instead, we'll focus on real settings and practical adjustments you can make right now. We'll cover everything from checking your baseline speed to optimizing your router, clearing up your Wi-Fi channels, and even fine-tuning your browser. By the end of this guide, your web pages should load faster, and your online experience will be significantly smoother. Let's start the clock and get your internet speed back on track. First things first, we need to establish a baseline. Is the problem your Wi-Fi, or is it the internet connection coming into your home? To find out, we need to bypass the wireless connection entirely. Grab an Ethernet cable and plug your computer directly into one of the LAN ports on your router. Once you're connected, open a web browser and go to a reliable speed testing site like fast.com or speedtest.net. Run the test and take note of the results. Your download speed, upload speed, and latency, also known as ping. Now compare these numbers to the internet plan you're paying for. If your wired speed is significantly lower than what your internet service provider or ISP has promised, then the problem isn't your Wi-Fi. It's time to contact your provider. But if your wired speed looks good, then we can confidently say the bottleneck is somewhere in your wireless network. Before we dive deep into router settings, let's perform a few quick sanity checks on your modem and ISP. Sometimes the simplest solution is the right one. First, check if your ISP is experiencing a local outage. Most providers have a status page on their website or a mobile app that will tell you if there are known issues in your area. If everything looks clear, it's time for the oldest trick in the IT handbook, a power cycle. Unplug the power from both your modem and your router. Don't just turn them off physically disconnect them from the wall. Wait for at least 30 seconds to allow their internal components to fully reset. Then, plug the modem back in first. Wait a couple of minutes for it to fully boot up. You'll know it's ready when the status lights for power, receive, send, and online are all solid. Once the modem is stable, plug your router back in and give it another minute or two to boot. This simple reboot resolves a surprising number of connectivity issues. Now, let's talk about location. Your router's physical placement has a massive impact on Wi-Fi performance. Radio waves don't like obstacles. Walls, furniture, and especially metal objects or large appliances like refrigerators and microwaves can block or reflect Wi-Fi signals, creating dead zones. The ideal spot for your router is in a central location in your home, as high up as possible, and out in the open. Avoid tucking it away in a cabinet, behind the TV, or in the basement. Think of it like a light bulb. You want its light to reach as many corners of the house as possible. If your router has external antennas, their orientation matters. For the best coverage, don't point them all in the same direction. A good rule of thumb is to position one antenna vertically and another horizontally. This helps ensure a strong signal for devices that are oriented differently, like a vertical phone or a horizontal laptop. Modern routers broadcast on at least two different frequency bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. Some newer ones even use 6 GHz. Think of these as different highways for your data. The 2.4 GHz band is the older standard. It offers longer range, but is slower and more susceptible to interference from other devices like microwaves and cordless phones. The 5 GHz band is much faster and less congested, but its signal doesn't travel as far and is more easily blocked by walls. For the best performance, you want to use the 5 GHz band for any devices that are relatively close to the router and need high speed, like your streaming device, gaming console, or work laptop. Use the 2.4 GHz band for devices that are farther away or don't need maximum speed like smart home gadgets. Many routers try to manage this automatically with a feature called Smart Connect or Band Steering, which uses a single Wi-Fi name. However, this can sometimes be unreliable. For maximum control, I recommend logging into your router settings and creating separate network names or SSIDs for each band, like Home Wi-Fi 2.4G and Home Wi-Fi 5G. This allows you to manually choose the best band for each device. Just like radio stations, Wi-Fi networks operate on specific channels. 
If you live in an apartment building or a dense neighborhood, chances are your router is competing with dozens of others on the same channel, causing interference and slowing everyone down. You can easily see this congestion using a free app. For Android, Wi-Fi Analyzer is a great option. For iOS, you can enable the Wi-Fi scanner in Apple's Airport Utility app. These apps will show you a graph of all the nearby networks and which channels they're using. For the 2.4 GHz band, you want to stick to channels 1, 6, or 11, as these are the only ones that don't overlap with each other. Pick whichever of these three is the least crowded. Also, set your channel width to 20 MHz. A wider 40 MHz width in this band often causes more interference than it's worth. For the 5 GHz band, you have more options. Just use the app to find a channel that no one else is on. After you've picked a cleaner channel, log into your router's admin page, navigate to the wireless settings, and manually set the channels you chose. This one change can make a huge difference in stability and speed. Your router is a mini computer, and just like your phone or laptop, its software, called firmware, needs to be updated. Manufacturers release firmware updates to patch security vulnerabilities, fix bugs, and often, improve performance and stability. Running on old firmware can be a hidden cause of slow browsing. To update it, you'll need to log into your router's administration panel, open a web browser and type in your router's IP address, which is usually OR, you'll find the correct address and login credentials printed on a sticker on the router itself. Once you're in, look for a section called Administration, System, or Advanced, and find the Firmware Update option. Most modern routers can automatically check for and download the latest version. Let it run the update, which will include a final reboot. It's a good practice to back up your router's configuration before you start, just in case. Here's a powerful tweak that directly impacts how quickly web pages begin to load. Every time you visit a website, your computer needs to look up its IP address using something called the Domain Name System, or DNS. Your ISP provides a default DNS server, but it's often not the fastest. By switching to a faster, public DNS service, you can shave precious milliseconds off every single site you visit. Two of the best and most trusted free options are Cloudflare and Google. To make this change, log back into your router's admin panel and look for the WAN, or Internet Settings. You should see fields for Primary DNS and Secondary DNS. Change them from Automatic to Manual and enter the new addresses. For Cloudflare, use 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. For Google use 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4, save the settings and reboot your router. This change applies to every device on your network, and it can make your entire browsing experience feel much snappier. Sometimes the problem isn't your network at all, it's your web browser. Over time, browsers can get bogged down by a large cache, cookies, and too many extensions. A quick cleanup can work wonders. First. Clear your browsing data, you don't need to delete everything, just clearing the cache and cookies from the last week or month is often enough to resolve issues. Next, audit your extensions. Go to your browser's extensions menu and look at everything you have installed. Each one uses memory and processing power. If you see anything you don't recognize or no longer use, disable or remove it. Be especially wary of having multiple ad blockers, as they can conflict and slow things down. Finally, make sure your browser is up to date. Updates include performance improvements and security fixes that are essential for a smooth and safe experience. If your browsing slows to a crawl whenever someone else in the house starts streaming a 4K movie or downloading a large file, your router is struggling with traffic management. This is where quality of service or QoS comes in. QoS prioritizes different types of internet traffic to prevent one high bandwidth activity from ruining the experience for everyone else. Some routers have a simple user-friendly QoS where you can drag and drop devices or applications into a high priority list. If you have this, prioritize your work computer or activities like web browsing. More advanced routers may offer a feature called Smart Q Management or SQM with algorithms like Cake or FQCodal. If you have this option, enable it. It works wonders for eliminating lag and buffer bloat. For SQM to work correctly, you'll need to set your bandwidth limits to slightly below your actual speed, about 90 to 95% of the results from your wired speed test. This gives the router a small amount of headroom to manage traffic effectively, ensuring your browsing remains responsive even when the network is busy. All right, we've moved the router, selected the right bands, cleared up the channels, updated the firmware, and switched to a faster DNS. Now for the moment of truth. 
go back to the same speed test site you used at the beginning and run the test again on your Wi-Fi device. Compare your new results to the original ones. You should see a noticeable improvement in your download and upload speeds, and especially in your latency. More importantly, try browsing the web. Pages should feel more responsive, and videos should start faster. By systematically working through these steps, you've successfully optimized your home network for a faster, more reliable internet experience. For more in-depth guides on everything from mesh networks to advanced security, be sure to subscribe to the Gnosis Hub. Thanks for watching.